In this lesson, we will be solving a problem in thermodynamics related to bomb calorimeter. So what we will be doing in this lesson, we will define molar enthalpy, calculate the energy released when 3.12 grams of glucose undergoes complete combustion in a closed system, which is a bomb calorimeter, discuss the experimental setup, calculate the molar enthalpy of glucose. At this time, what we expect you to know, definitions and key terms like system, surroundings, open system, closed system, isolated system, exothermic and endothermic reactions, specific heat capacity and heat capacity, units of energy, ability to determine molar mass, calculate moles from mass of substances provided, chemical reactions and energy exchange. In general, when we look at chemical reactions, we find that during chemical reactions, there is always energy transfer. Energy can either be released or energy can be absorbed. The energy that is released or absorbed could be in the form of thermal energy or light energy. If light energy is absorbed, the reaction is usually referred to as a photochemical reaction. For example, photosynthesis is a reaction where light is absorbed by the reactants. Or if light is emitted, it could be bioluminescence or chemiluminescence. Glow sticks are examples of chemiluminescence. On the other hand, if heat energy is released or absorbed, they are called exothermic reactions or endothermic reactions. In exothermic reactions, heat is given off from the system, that is a bomb calorimeter, to the surroundings. And endothermic reactions, heat is absorbed from the surroundings into the system. Molar enthalpy, or delta H for glucose, that's what we're going to determine in this problem. Molar enthalpy, it is the energy released when one mole of glucose undergoes complete combustion under standard conditions. Energy released is expressed in joules or kilojoules. The unit of molar enthalpy is kilojoules per mole. If we express the unit of energy in joules or kilojoules, it would mean that it is the energy released for a definite quantity and not for one mole. Here is a problem that we will be trying to solve, which is obtained from an experimental evidence collected from a bomb calorimeter experiment. The problem is when 3.12 grams of glucose C6H12O6 is burned in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature of the water in the calorimeter increases from 23.8 degrees Celsius to 35.6 degrees Celsius. The calorimeter contains 775 grams of water and the bomb calorimeter itself has a heat capacity of 893 joules per degree Celsius. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. How much heat was produced by the combustion of glucose sample? Some definitions recalled. Specific heat capacity represented using lowercase c. It is defined as the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of any substance through 1 degree Celsius. For water, the specific heat capacity C is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Or this value can also be expressed in kilojoules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Heat capacity, capital C uppercase C, it is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of some quantity of substance through 1 degree Celsius. S capital C is equal to C times M, specific heat capacity times mass. Specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water. And if you have 50 grams, multiply it by 50. So capital C or heat capacity represents uh, the energy required to raise the temperature of certain quantity of substance. Here C is a specific heat, M is the mass of the substance. We are using grams here because we are using 
the value of specific heat as 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Capital C or uppercase C or heat capacity is sometimes referred to as a calorie meter constant. The calorie meter has a fixed mass and when you buy a calorie meter it comes with a calorie meter constant because the mass of the calorie meter is a constant. If you know the specific heat of the metal you can multiply the two and obtain the calorie meter constant or heat capacity but usually it comes with a value from the manufacturer. Equations used in the calculation, two equations. The first one is Q is equals to MC delta T, where M is a mass, C is a specific heat, and delta T is change in temperature. And the second one is Q is equals to uppercase C times delta T, or heat capacity times change in temperature. We are going to write an equation for the combustion of glucose, C6H12O6 solid plus 6O2 gas gives you 6 CO2 gas plus 6 H2O liquid plus energy. So this is an equation representing the combustion of glucose. We need to calculate the amount of energy released here when we are using 3.12 grams of glucose and then convert it to the amount of energy it would have released if you used one mole. Since energy is released in the reaction, the reaction is an exothermic reaction or heat is given out to the surroundings. In the problem given only 3.12 grams of glucose is used. However, we will be required to calculate the heat energy released when one mole of glucose undergoes complete combustion. This value is referred to as molar enthalpy of combustion of glucose or delta H glucose. In order to determine this value we will use a Baum calorie meter where the combustion occurs in a closed system. Here is a graphical representation of a calorie meter. This is a generic diagram which tells you how most of the bomb calorie meters look like. We have two electrodes that are connected by leads and the leads connect to a fuse that is placed inside the fuel crucible which contains the fuel. We need to ignite the fuel to initiate combustion and that's the role of the electrodes. Temperature has to be measured therefore we place a thermometer inside the water that is present in the outer jacket of the bomb calorie meter and that's filled with water. We will know the exact mass of water in that and we need to measure the temperature change after the combustion reaction takes place within the bomb calorie meter. So we need a thermometer to measure the temperature change or delta T. The bomb calorie meter is a smaller unit placed inside the water and in this the chemical reaction takes place, so the combustion reaction takes place and the heat from the bomb calorie meter is transferred to the water outside and that's what we measure, the change in temperature of water that is brought about by the combustion of glucose which is transferred or transmitted through the bomb calorie meter. The fuel, in this case we are going to use glucose, is placed inside the fuel crucible. It also has a fuse which can be ignited by the electrodes that are connected to an electrical circuit which contains batteries. The outside of the small bomb calorie meter we have the water that fills the larger jacket or larger container. For combustion reaction to take place we need oxygen. So the second reactant in the chemical reaction was oxygen and oxygen will be the excess reagent therefore we will pump in excess oxygen into the closed bomb calorie meter and that will uh, give us a complete combustion of glucose. In order to calculate the amount of heat energy released by the complete combustion of glucose inside the bomb calorie meter, we will calculate the amount of heat energy absorbed by water that is QH2O and we will also calculate the amount of heat energy absorbed by the bomb calorie meter. Together it will give us a total amount of energy that is released by the complete combustion of glucose inside the chambers.
Q total is equal to the amount of heat energy absorbed by water plus the amount of heat energy absorbed by the calorie meter. That is QH2O written in red and QCal written in blue. So here is the problem again being restated. When 3.12 grams of glucose C6H12O6 is burned in a bomb calorie meter, the temperature of the calorie meter increases from 23.8 degrees Celsius to 35.6 degrees Celsius. The calorie meter contains 775 grams of water and the bomb calorie meter itself has a heat capacity of 893 joules per degree Celsius. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. How much heat was produced by the combustion of glucose sample? Calculate the molar enthalpy of glucose from this information, which means we need to calculate Q total and convert it to joules or kilojoules per mole. So in order to calculate the total amount of heat energy released during the combustion reaction, we will use the equation Q total is equal to QH2O plus Q calorie meter. So Q total is equal to QH2O, which is the amount of heat energy absorbed by water which can be calculated from the equation mc delta t. So mass of H2O times specific heat of H2O times delta t plus the heat energy absorbed by the calorie meter which is capital C which is heat capacity of the calorie meter times delta t. So the amount of heat energy absorbed by water can be calculated from mass of water which is 775 grams specific heat capacity of water which is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Initial temperature T initial is 23.8 degrees Celsius. Final temperature is Tf is 35.6 degrees Celsius. Delta T is T initial minus T final is equals to minus 11.8 degrees Celsius. Substituting the numbers you will find that the product of these numbers will yield negative 38262.68 joules. Similarly, the heat energy absorbed by the calorie meter is equal to heat capacity of the calorie meter that is capital C 893 joules per degree Celsius delta T, T initial minus T final exactly as the same in the previous case minus 11.8 degrees Celsius so 893 joules per degree Celsius times minus 11.8 degrees Celsius will give you minus 10537.4 joules. In order to get the total amount of heat energy released, we are going to add the two. Q total is equals to heat released by combustion of 3.12 grams of glucose and that is Q H2O plus Q calorie meter which is equals to minus 48800.08 joules. If you divide this number by 1000, the value can be expressed in kilojoules. Since the value is greater than 1000, we are going to divide it by 1000. Therefore, that would be equal to minus 48.80 kilojoules. So now we have the total amount of energy released by 3.12 grams of glucose. We have to convert this value to kilojoules per mole. And in order to do that, we will take the heat energy released by the combustion of, compl of 3.12 grams of glucose, which is negative 48.80 kilojoules. And we will apply this equation delta H molar enthalpy is equal to Q by N. We have already defined molar enthalpy. It's uh, enthalpy of combustion of glucose when one mole of glucose undergoes complete combustion. So delta H molar enthalpy of combustion is equal to Q divided by N. So we already calculated the value of Q. We need to calculate the value of N of the number of moles of glucose present in 3.12 grams of glucose. 
the unit of Q is kilojoules, the unit of N is moles, the value for kilojoules is 48.80 kilojoules. We have to calculate the value of moles, which is N. N is equals to mass over molar mass. Mass is 3.12 grams of glucose. Molar mass is approximately 180 grams per mole. So from these two values, we will get the number of moles of glucose, which is 0 0.0173 moles. So we have the number of moles of glucose and we also have the value of Q. All you have to do is substitute those values in the equation. Delta H is equals to Q by N or delta H is equals to minus 48.80 kilojoules divided by 0 0.0173 moles which will give you kilojoules per moles or delta H is equals to minus 2820.8 kilojoules per mole. Delta H is negative because delta T, T was found to be negative T initial minus T final, which also implies it satisfies the condition for the convention for energy released, which should always have a negative value. So delta H is minus 2820.8 kilojoules per mole. This value is based on the experiment that we have conducted, maybe slightly different from the theoretical value, but you get a general idea as to how to solve this problem using a bomb calorie meter and the values obtained from it. So molar enthalpy of combustion of glucose is delta H is equals to 2820.8 kilojoules per mole. And that's how you can solve a question based on bomb calorie meter. The problems can be modified to ask you one or the other values that are present in the equations that are given to you. Uh, using your intuition, you can be able to calculate the different aspects that are asked. We can ask you to calculate the heat capacity of the calorie meter. We can ask you to calculate the specific heat of a substance. We can ask you what the initial temperature or the final temperature would be if you are given molar enthalpies. So those are some of the variations that you would notice in the types of problems that you would see related to bomb calorie meters. That's it for now.